Never Meet Your Heroes by Lucas McNally. The night sky with all its gloom and mist, the ghastly rain pouring from above, pulling down and down and down until we focus on a bike as it dashes through the wind. Jimmy, a 20 something white man, darts through the night on his enormous mountain bike. It's cold, bitter, and he's wearing himself out, but Jimmy powers on through with lightning speed down the soaked country roads. He reaches for his bottled water. He brings it to view to find there's nothing but a dribble. He slots it away before gazing up to the sky, open-mouthed and catching the droplets of rainwater. As he does, his bike begins to swerve to each side, rough and abrupt in motion. He locks his grip round the bars, but then, crash! Jimmy goes flying off the front of the handlebars and plummeting to the pavement. Ah, oh, idiot! Oh, you fucking idiot! Jimmy slowly rises, whimpering in discomfort with every move. As he groans through the pain, he spots the sight of blood smeared around his legs from the landing. A beaming light shines from the near distance and leisurely travels down the road. Jimmy retrieves his bike from the ground as the light reveals itself as a black cab. The headlights bounce onto Jimmy's newly nicked face as the vehicle halts next to him. The window promptly comes down. You're right, eh, son? Derek, a 50-something white man, a face full of hair, bloodshot and huge under-eye bags, wearing a fleece, thick fleece. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Nothing more than a funny turn. That's all. You got no helmet strapped on. <laughs> no. You young and you think you're indestructible from anything. I'll be fine. I am fine. Wait. Aren't you that lad from the telly? Jimmy O'Neill, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, guilty as charged. Well, I'm good with faces, Jim. And names. And, well, anything to be perfectly frank with you. But, Jesus Christ, it's you. In the flesh. I can't call you that, can't I? Jim, is that all right? I'm Derek, two R's and a C. Anything but Jimbo, and you're fine. It would be an honour to drive you down to A&E. Jump yourself in. No, no, you're fine. Honestly, we needn't bother doing all that. Not leaving you here high and dry. You might have internal bleeding. Yeah, concerns appreciated, but I... Superficial and all. Oh, I'm as tough as old boots. But I'm not taking no for an answer. He indicates moving his bike to the boot. Uh, would it be all right if I... Yeah, toss it in the back, son. Jimmy hobbles to the taxi's back and swings open the boot. Sliding his bike through, he catches Derek's eye line in the rear view mirror. Derek flips the light out of the taxi as Jimmy closes the boot and makes his way round to the back of the cab. Jimmy smuggles himself in the back, still in discomfort. Now do not let me go forgetting, Jim. I'll get my camera out and we'll have a nice photo together. Yeah, sure. Jimmy O'Neill sat in the back of my cab. Let's put a smile on my face. Beaming with joy, Derek fires up the engine as Jimmy studies the new collection of cuts scattered down his knees. Derek's taxi speeds off into the night. Destination, A and E. Rain thumps the roof. Good job, boys, passing by, eh? Big problem. Have you all fall back down there? Yeah, not all heroes wear capes, do they? How's that head of yours? Uh, I bet it'll get worse. The meter's still ticking away, just so you're aware. I'd rather not do exceptions for let's for celebrities, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, get that. Well, we can't be all right. Do you accept cards? <laughs> Don't be so bloody daft. <laughs> right. I've no cash on me. I'm not charging you, daft sod. Your fans will be on the wall, pal. You think the Donna was sat back here? She's ringing a bell, she local. Uh, a little further out. You're a local star, though, eh? Yeah, I think that's overselling me. Done well for yourself, ain't you? Come on, have some flaming pride. Oh, 
It'd be rude of me to grumble. So right. I've been watching you. Sorry? Every Wednesday. I stick you on and I'm sat watching with a lovely plate of tikka masala on my knees. That's why I do what I do. <coughs> you got um you got anything to drink? Oh, as luck would have it. Derek tosses yeah. through a hip flask to Jimmy. Right. Don't suppose you've What's made you go gallivanting out in this anyway? I mean, I don't want to cause offence or anything, but it seems like an idiotic thing to do. Jimmy takes a swig from the hip flask. He's quickly repulsed and hands it straight back through to Derek. His eyes flick to his watch on his wrist, shattered from the landing. It uh, clears my head, that's all. Folk that get pleasure out of this are off their rocker. Hey, I hope that bike of yours ain't gone bust when you've gone over on it. Oh, I'll, I'll fix it. Will you? Yeah, I'll, I'll get someone to fix it. Fingers crossed it's not beyond the realms of repair, eh? Yeah. So, Derek with two R's and a C. Been busy tonight? <laughs> now, there's a question that don't get asked often enough. You're my first. On a Saturday night? Well, our first Saturday post the new year. Oh, yeah. Folk are barely scraping by. Am I right in thinking that you get by all nicely? Those fancy checks, eh? Yeah. Had an all right Christmas, though. Well, I've... I've had worse. Yeah, I've had better. <laughs> Good job you aren't charging me. You've taken the long way around. It was just my daughter and I, as always. Her mother passed not long ago after she were born and uh, she, my daughter, well, she's not been coping too well at the minute. Yeah, that all sounds... Yeah. I've actually got a little picture of her. See for yourself, Jim. He grabs the photo and passes it through the glass screen. University next year, I suspect. There's a sudden switch in Jimmy's face as he studies it. One of the proper good ones and all. That put a smile on my face and all. You coming off that bike. Save me the trouble of running you down. We focus on the picture. Annie, rose-cheeked in a red dress and a cheesy grin slapped across her face. She's cradling a glass in each hand and having the best time. But lingering in the background, Jimmy, leaning for support on the outside railing of a thriving nightclub, his face planted inside his pint glass. Jimmy claps eyes with Derek. His world comes crashing down. Gotcha. Click. The doors lock, and the cab pivots around a corner. I'm good with faces, Jim. By the look on yours, you and I both know you're in the deepest of shit. You're a sick, dirty bastard, aren't you? Hey, my Annie told me, poured her heart out to me. And you've got what? Nothing to say. Seriously. Nothing at all. <laughs> How's about you? You pull us over. And we'll talk about whatever. Do I look like a mug to you? I don't. I, I don't know what it is you think I've, I've gone. I've Man. gone. Derek strikes his fist onto the glass screen, making Jimmy leap out of his skin. I told myself I'll keep a lid on all this till it's over. But you're making that damn near impossible. You spotted yourself, staggering around in the back. You were there. <laughs> you said it, Derek. I'm, I'm a star. And, and occasionally there's some, there's some that get a kick out spreading shit about stars. The idiots are the ones that take them at face value. Do you think I'm going to believe 
some repulsive little shit over my own kid. An idiot would think that. The night you, you said, well, I've been drinking, you see. Annie, she, she'd she been Don't. drinking. Don't say her. Do not say her name to me. Don't ever say it. You've got the wrong end of the of the stick, all right? Yeah, I've blotted that whole night out. And you dragged her into the cubicles and took her knickers off. So you could grope her. Did you blot that out too? When you rubbed your filthy hands down her without consent, did you just so happen to blot that out as well? That's 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 serious. That's a serious allegation. And, and, and so beyond the truth, it's, it's, it's laughable. It's laughable, is it? You wrapping your grubby hands around her neck whilst you... Whilst you... As you assault my little girl. That's not... I didn't. That's... You raped her you intoxicated her and you raped her you dropped some rotten drug drug into her drink you're fucking you mental her up. is that what you bother. did jimmy big bother that what you've done to other girls you need to quit saying what have you shit been like doing hey you can't can you you can't admit to the inhuman things you've done my little annie you ruined her so help me god the truth will out you've absolutely lost it I've barely started. Derek suddenly swivels around another corner, which results in Jimmy thumping to one side of the cab as Derek releases his foot off the accelerator. The headlights bounce onto a looming figure dead ahead. Jimmy readjusts himself. As he gazes out of the windshield, he squints his eyes as he attempts to see through the patches of fog. And as he does, standing in the middle of nowhere, Annie, straight ahead, wielding a large wooden axe in her arms, centred in the middle of God knows where, and huge cliff tops over her shoulders. Jimmy. Thoroughly terrified, Jimmy claps eyes with Derek again. How's that head of yours? And as we stay on Jimmy's face one final time, petrified, we snap into a black scream. The end.